Good morning. Kings come and go. Is Jehoiakim about ready to be sent away? Jeremiah 22, verses 8 to 10. And many nations will pass by this city, and everyone will say to his neighbor, Why has the Lord done so to this great city? Then they will answer, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord their God, and worshipped other gods and served them. Weep not for the dead, nor bemoan him. Weep bitterly for him who goes away. For he shall return no more, nor see his native country. God sent Jeremiah to the king's house to prophesy. In yesterday's devotional, we left him warning the king in the king's household that the king needs to judge fairly or else. That's kind of where things have come to in the nation. So today we're looking at the next part of Jeremiah's statement there at the king's house. So if the kingdom of Judah and its king do not return to faithfulness to the Lord, they're going to lay siege to Jerusalem and attack it. And not only attack it, they're going to defeat it. And he ends with an interesting twist here. He says, more not for the dead. What are we talking about here? The previous king was Josiah, and he was loved and respected and widely appreciated in the kingdom. So this is a reference to him. Josiah was a good king, and that puts him on a very short list because most of the kings of, of the ten northern kingdoms and the two southern kingdoms, most of them were, were bad kings. So the, the list of good kings is a very short list. Josiah died a very tragic death. You can read about it over there in 2 Kings 23. But I think what was more interesting to Jehoiakim was what Jeremiah said next. See what it says? Weep bitterly for him who goes away, for he shall return no more, nor see his native country. If Jehoiakim doesn't turn, he's going to be taken away. He's going to be taken away into captivity, and he's going to die in some foreign country, Babylon. So, you know, our decisions have consequences. Our opportunities to repent, every one of them, is a gift. We would not repent on our own. It's a privilege. It's, it's an opportunity that's a gift from heaven to turn to him. We turn a lot of these gifts down, too many. We shouldn't turn a single one down. And you know, those in the public eye, those who have taken stands, sometimes it's much harder for a person like that to back down because, you know, I'm on record publicly saying this. And so it's very hard sometimes to rise above pride and turn back and say, you know, I was wrong. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in a different direction. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that everybody knows I'm going in a different direction. True leaders, true disciples of Jesus Christ will always say yes to him, no matter what it costs them. It's better to be surrendered to Jesus than to be in any kind of defiance to him. Duh. Always follow Jesus, no matter what it costs. Always follow Jesus. Don't turn back. Always come toward the king. So this is a dangerous moment for Jehoiakim. What is he going to do? Dangerous and yet a great opportunity. And Jeremiah is risking his life to put this opportunity in front of the king. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for your interest in our lives. Thank you that you don't forsake the poor and you don't forsake the rich. Thank you that you're coming to Jehoiakim here through Jeremiah's ministry. You are making a, a, a final effort uh, to, to a final statement from the prophecy, pleading with him to turn back and to return toward your direction. Lord, we'll see as we continue what actually happened, but we're thinking about us now, Lord. Help us to be soft in our hearts, ready to turn to you. Help us to have enough courage to change direction if we've been wrong so that we always, always, always turn back to Jesus no matter what the case and admit that we were wrong and go in the right direction if we've been wrong. Please, Lord, may we not make a similar mistake that Jehoiakim is on the verge of making. We ask for your Holy Spirit to move on our hearts and change our minds where they need to be changed. And we ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen. So a question, what opportunities is God giving you today? God be with you on this day. Hey, by the way, if you're ever in the area, we're over here on the western edge of, of Lake Michigan, and come over and visit our churches. Come over to the Muskegon Church or the Fremont Church. We'd love to have you. Our churches are open. We'll respect you if you come with a mask, if you come without a mask. We want you to come and join us as we worship the God of the high heaven. Just letting you know you're invited. Mm -hmm.